Hey, how's it going? Hey, pretty good. How you doing? Pretty good. What do we have here? I have an autographed copy of Richard Nixon's memoirs, first edition. OK. So where'd you get the book? I got it at a garage sale. I just knew it was valuable. So. Got it for 50 cents, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop to sell my Richard Nixon's memoirs with his signature. I would say most of the value of the book is based on the signature. Well, I'm hoping to get $2,200 for it. I never read his memoirs. I know a little bit about him. I know he was raised a Quaker. I mean, he was a good vice president under Eisenhower. I think one of his big problems was the fact that he just assumed he was going to be president after Eisenhower. And um, through the course of a lot of things, it didn't happen. It was one of the closest elections in American history. I think it came down to less than half a million votes. And the whole Watergate thing, some people say he really didn't even know about it. What it was was people from the Republican Party broke into the Democratic headquarters. And when he found out about it, he tried to cover things up that he shouldn't. Congress was going to vote to impeach him. But before they could do that, he resigned. He repaired his reputation to a degree after a few years. Had an interesting life. Did a few bad things, but then again, I'm sure every president does. So. <laughs> <laughs> These memoirs were Nixon's attempt to clear his name and take attention away from the Watergate scandal. I'm guessing that a signed copy would be worth some money because presidential stuff usually does well. So it's signed by him? Yeah, it's actually, there's a page designed for his signature, so. OK, you're saying that's his signature in pen? Right. OK. You a fan of Richard Nixon? Well, he was kind of a little bit before my time. But I've been to the Richard Nixon uh, presidential library, so I've showed him this book already. OK. And what did they have to say about it? About five years ago, they said it was worth at least $2,500. And they think the signature is real. That is absolutely amazing how they can appraise it for $2,500. And we think it's real. <laughs> <laughs> so how much do you want for it? I'm going to ask for $2,200. All right, just so you know, when you go to a library or something like that, um, you're dealing with people who really don't buy and sell stuff. You're dealing with people who put stuff on display. And what something is worth is very subjective. I'm going to get a friend down here. I'm going to have her take a look at it. She will give us a non-biased opinion. Hang out, maybe buy something, figure out where okay. you're going to spend oh, all that I'll money. The upside of an expert coming in is that they verify that the signature is real. Well, this is it, um, the memoirs of Tricky Dick. <laughs> it's signed. I'm assuming this was one of those limited editions where you signed them all. Yes, so this is an Eastern Press limited edition. They have a whole series of presidents that are signed. This was really controversial when it first came out. He made a deal with an advance for $2.5 million. This is in the 1970s. It's a lot of money. And people were infuriated by this idea that he would make a ton of money after he had just resigned for not being a crook. Okay. <laughs> so even before the book first comes out, there are whole committees saying boycott Nixon's memoirs and don't buy books by crooks. OK. Pretty clever, right? Uh, yeah. Uh. I mean, it probably backfired on him, because when everyone's boycotting it, everyone's talking about the book. And everyone who talks about the book, you probably want to read the book that everyone's talking about. That is the problem. Mark Twain's book, Huckleberry Finn, was banned in his local library. And his reaction to that was, oh, that'll sell us 20,000 copies for sure. <laughs> You'd imagine Nixon's memoir would be a little bit juicier than most other presidents, Eisenhower, et cetera, because there's a lot of drama going on behind the scenes. He writes about his resignation. He writes about the White House tapes. There are a lot of kind of juicy tidbits in there that people wanted to know. So the big question, what's it worth? I mean, yes. it's... So the first edition, which is generally what collectors want, a signed first edition goes for about $1,000. This is from 1988. The first edition came out in 1978. This is not a first edition. But it does have a signature. And the nice thing about the Eastern Press is you don't have to worry about the authenticity. If it's signed on this limitation page here, you're good. OK. So I'm looking more towards around $250. <sighs> I just crush hopes and dreams. It's just part of my job. Sorry. It's a bummer. Thank you. Glad I could help. Take care. Thanks. Mm -hmm. The Eastern Press has genuine leather. They try to do really nice things. That said, there are a lot of other fine presses who have particular attention to detail that I personally appreciate more. So will you take 100 bucks for it? Uh, would you be willing to go 200? 
Nixon stuff is just tough. It's like um, Pete Rose. I mean, he's he has the reputation of being tainted. The price of his stuff goes down. It is difficult to sell. I'll tell you what. If you go maybe 130, I'll I'll do 130. 125 bucks. Okay, 125. Okay. Thanks, man. All right, let's go right over there and we'll write it up. You know what? Maybe I'll read it. Can't be that bad. I'm really disappointed. I thought it was uh, worth a lot more than that. Next time, I'm going to bring in my first edition Donna Summers book with her signature.